Okay, welcome back to our uh, second hour. Um, in the previous lecture, the previous lesson, we were looking at um, uh, two, two main important things of restoring <clears throat> our souls. And we were looking at how, uh, okay, yes, we're hurt, we are broken. Uh, how do we find our healing and deliverance? We, we are looking at it in two parts where we are understanding the basis for our healing and deliverance. And uh, that's what we looked into initially to understand that God is the one who brings about that healing and deliverance. God is the one who restores our souls. Uh, we looked at <clears throat> the difference between uh, healing, deliverance, and journey. And uh, we will progress into understanding how uh, healing and deliverance takes place. And at, at the end of these um, lessons, we will look into how do we journey into that place of wholeness. So um, today we're looking at the basis of this healing and deliverance. And uh, there are <clears throat> five specific. So when, when, we, when we discuss the basis of healing and deliverance and the wholeness, it is first of all necessary for us to understand uh, and take hold of, take grasp of, and receive what God has already provided for us which is our emotional wholeness. Now, this is something that God has already done for us, and that's what we are learning to understand. And we're going to be looking at five specific aspects. The first two is what we'll be looking at today. The first one is the healing and deliverance that has been given to us, provided for us on the cross of Calvary. That's what we, we are looking at, focusing on today. And also uh, of how we have been made the new creation, as we see in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18, that we are made a new creation in Christ Jesus. That's the second basis of our healing and deliverance. The third one is the authority that has been given unto us to cast out demons. That's the third one. The fourth one is the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit of our lives. And the fifth is the power of God's word, how, uh, how we use the word of God and the power that it has to save us and what God's word says about us. So five things, which is the, the, our healing and deliverance is provided for us because of what Jesus did on the cross. Um, uh, the second is the, the fact that we are new creation for those who've been saved by him. We, we are new creation. The third is the authority that has been given unto us to cast out demons. The fourth is the anointing the power and the work of the Holy Spirit that brings about um, the healing in our <clears throat> in our pers in our inner person, and the lastly and lastly, it is the power of God's word that saves us and saves our souls. So we'll look at the first two um, in our <clears throat> in our time today, and uh, um, so let's let's look at uh, at the the very foundational truth of our faith in, in Christ or the foundation of our belief um, is that we know that when Christ died on the cross, what did he do for us? When he died on the cross, he paid the price for our, for whatever we were supposed to bear. So he prayed paid the price for our redemption. He paid the price for our sin. He paid the price for our sickness. He paid the price even for our emotional wholeness. And when we look at the cross, when we look at what Jesus did for us on the cross, we know that it is a completed work. It completed whatever we need. It is already done. It is done for us. And that becomes that foundational truth. It becomes that tenet for us to hold on to that um, what Christ did for us on the cross is what gives us our freedom, is what gives us our emotional wholeness. And we need to be uh, not just knowledgeable about it or aware about it, but fully holding on to the truth that Nothing is ours out of our own doing or out of our own righteousness, but only because of what, what Christ did for us on the cross. So the cross is the, the uh, <clears throat> provision for us. What, what Jesus did on the cross has already been provided. It's been completed. It's been finished. The work is done. 
there's nothing more that you and I have to do because it comes through that. It's it's through our faith in what he's done for us begins and deliverance about our healing and deliverance. Now uh, when we look at uh, you know, when, when we look at it, um, uh, some some of the what has the cross given uh, unto us, or what has the cross done for us? The first thing that we see in, uh, uh, and I'd like someone to take this and, and read this, which is in Isaiah chapter fifty three, verse five. Isaiah fifty three, verse five. Um, the 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 verse says, and maybe someone can also read it, is the chastisement for our peace was upon him, which means the punishment, the punishment that he bore is so that we, you and I, have peace. So the punishment for our peace is, is something that, that he did on the cross. So he took the punishment so that you and I could experience this peace. And we will talk a little bit more about this. So, so could somebody read that Isaiah 53 verse 5, please? Can I read first? Yes, sure, sure. Please go ahead. <clears throat> Isaiah 53 verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. So if you look at this, um, uh, we see what happened on the cross. Wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement, meaning the punishment, that he was the one who took the punishment so that we could be made whole. So that whatever, uh, it says the chastisement for our peace was upon him. Now the word peace that is written here is in, in the English terminology could probably mean serenity or just having a sense of calmness of mind. But when you look at the Hebrew definition of that term, or definitely the root of that word is shalom. And the word shalom is an all-inclusive word. And it is best translated as peace in English. But when you look at the original, the word shalom is a total complete sense of well-being. It's total. So when you say total, it includes fullness or it includes wholeness or it's complete. And that just does not involve a soundness. Uh, it, it does not involve just a soundness of mind, but it involves health. It involves safety. It involves prosperity. It involves a wellness. It involves healing. It's that, and it is a wholeness in every area. That's what the root of that word word would mean. Um, I'm, I'm just actually looking up that. So it's 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 a place of um, you know where, where where the word comes in peace. It's that word that says shalom, where there is uh, you know if you look at it, it says well, happy, friendly. Um, health, prosperity, peace, um, safe, being having good welfare, being whole. So these are the, the some of the translations that come just out of that word. So what it says is on the cross, when he was wounded, when he was bruised, his punishment bought us this peace. So his punishment was provided us, his punishment provided us with shalom. So not just that his by his wounds we are healed and the word healed is comes from the hebrew word rafa which means to make whole or to cure or to heal so we see that the provision that jesus gave made on the cross for us through what he did uh, also involves that emotional wholeness so when we you know even <clears throat> i think even when we partake in communion when we partake um, 
in the uh, in you know on the in the Lord's table, it is to understand that this wholeness comes in every area of our lives, and that becomes the basis and understanding that you know what He did for me on the cross has bought me my emotional wellness, has bought me my emotional wholeness. There is there is no need for me to to stand in that place of despair or brokenness because he is the one who has borne the punishment for 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 that even for whatever i have also gone through so the first one is that we receive complete wholeness because of what happened on the cross of what jesus died did for us on the cross the second that we see is that we are moved from a place of darkness we are delivered from the clutch of darkness or from the power of darkness into the kingdom of of light so what does this mean so when we are moved from one to another the first does not have any claim on you the darkness has no more claim on you and what does this darkness mean the kingdom of darkness which means the 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 the, the demons or the devil has no more claim over you because you have been purchased by the redemptive work of God of what he did on the cross from a place of darkness to light you have been moved from a place of darkness to light and we see that um, you know in in uh, Colossians 1 13 to 14 you could you could follow that in the notes it says he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption so we have you have your wholeness because you're taken out of darkness translated into the kingdom of light light so expect that all those dark things <clears throat> or all those uh, broken things are no more a part of you because you have moved from one place into another and it is grasping on to this truth that is important that is that that needs to happen first so so just um you know helping yourself see that it that this this translation has already been made this move has already been made and you are no more a part of that place of darkness that is there uh, another verse that i'd want to highlight is acts 26 18 it says uh, in order to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God. You know, this means that darkness, because of what he's done, there is no more uh, legal claim. Darkness doesn't have any kind of a claim over your life. You walk in freedom. They have no more right. Darkness has no more right in your life. Unless you are willingly going to give it back to them right so this is a standpoint or a or an understanding or a mindset or a or a truth that that you engage in that you understand every time you know you you feel that sense of struggle and despair that you feel saying that you know darkness all of this has been removed and it it was it was taken away and it has no more right um over me so when you know when you look at uh, those verses in romans 5 12 and verse 18 it, it's not there in the notes but it's given just there as a reference it says that sin entered through adam and because of sin death came in because of sin and in and because of that you and i uh, face death because we all have sinned uh, but in the same manner and, and the same way, just like the result of that sin was death for all of us, so also the result of the what Jesus did on the cross was what brings each of us life, which, which brings us justification as if we have not sinned. So Adam's sin and death ended the sin of adam and death ended on the cross and we have new life eternity and we have freedom and victory as a result of what jesus did on the cross so what 
the kingdom of darkness hope to bring through our bondage by sin, that's what Jesus took and moved us from that place, from darkness into light. Another verse, a couple of other verses that, you know, that uh, we should bring out here is Romans 6, uh, verse 6 and verse 14. It says, for we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because of what God did for us on the cross, we, the uh, sin has no more power over us. It has been rendered powerless. And as a result, so when you look at verse 14, it says, so sin shall not be your master. It will, you will not be under a slave of it because you are no more under the law, but you are under grace. So all that sin entangled us in, even our emotional burdens and bondages that has entangled us in, has been done away with and we no more are in the power or in the clutches of that, of, of that brokenness or of that place of uh, uh, um, bondage but it is no more a place of bondage and it does not have mastery over you it does not have a command over you because right now because of what jesus done on the cross you have moved and you are under that place of grace and that's where you know even as we say that some of the generational bondages that you may be experiencing gets broken off because, because of the faith that we have and what happened on the cross, the victory that we experience on the cross. Okay? And that gets removed because we, we, we are under the grace of God. 1 Peter 1.18 also, uh, another verse that comes up is, for you know that it was not with perishable things that you were redeemed from the empty way of life. Right? It was not something that was perishable. Right? It, was, it, it is the work of God. It is something that only God has purchased for us and not something that, that tangibly um, changes our experience. It's not something that, uh, that, that makes, uh, that, that we can do to, to experience that, that freedom. Right? But it is the precious blood of Christ. Verse 18 says, it is the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. So we were not redeemed because of um, these corruptible things like silver and gold. That's the examples that are given there um, or, or anything that has been fruitless, but it has been because of the precious Christ, right? So what has been fired for us across is our complete wholeness, that is punishment, uh, bought us our shalom. Because of what he did on the cross, it moved us from a place of darkness to light, where darkness has no more power and no more authority over us. We've been taken out of darkness into that place of light. The third thing that we see is we have uh, moved from a place of curse to blessing. When Jesus died on the cross, um, what did he do? He brought us out of the curse into the blessing. So, you know, we are unable to keep the law and the result of not keeping the law is death, right? But Jesus died on the cross to bring us out of that curse. So through his work, he moved us from under that curse. It's whatever it bought, whatever the results of it, whatever ensued after it, those consequences, and has brought us into a place of blessing. And we see that in uh, Colossians 2, uh, verse 14. It says, he has taken it out of the way, the handwriting of requirements that was against us, so those things that were written uh, against us, has been taken out of the way, and he's the one who's nailed it to the cross. And he became a curse for us. So Galatians 3, 13, 14 says, cursed is everyone. It, 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 you know, that, that was the Levitical law, that cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, right? So Christ redeemed us from that curse so that he became a curse for us. So every blessing would be 
for us that we might receive that blessing through faith okay so every thing that you see i mean every every curse that has been there over you has has been removed and we've been moved into a place of blessing so when you look at um you know, I, I think it'll it'll be very useful for us to uh, quickly turn to Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, and um, you will see that there are portions of what it says of uh, the blessings that are there for obedience. And um, you know, if if you look at the first eight verses. Oh, sorry, first 14 verses, you will find the blessings that are there. And, uh, you know, I would, I would encourage you all, um, maybe, you know, some of you just uh, either on the chat, look up that, that entire chapter and bring about what is the blessing that you have because of what, of, of, the, of the price that Christ paid on you. So let's just look quickly at verses 1 to 14. And um, we'll probably read that out, 1 to 14. And on the side, maybe I'll read the 1 to 14, and then you can, uh, on the side, write down what are the blessings that we have um, for us. Okay? So Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 to 14. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord, to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand, and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Then all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, in the produce of your ground, in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not be beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them, so you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you to this day, to the right or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. Okay, so what have you observed as the blessings that we have because of who we are in Christ? Okay, lovely. I think I'm getting a lot of responses. So we would be a set apart people. Okay, this is Anita has written, we're blessed, we're prosperous, there is protection, there is, we are, um, we are called by his name, set apart people, we have victory, we have generational blessings, we become lenders. Thank you, thank you, Anita. 
anymore. Anybody else has any other um, anything else that y'all want to add in? I think Anita has given us a very good uh, um, list of what it says. Anybody else? We are the head and not the tail. That the work, yes, Prabhaka has written this, work of our hands will be blessed. Wonderful. What else? There are many more. I mean, this is a power-packed um, 14 verse. Anything else? Enemies Anybody will be can? defeated. Your enemies will be defeated. Yes, your enemies will be defeated. Thank you, Sissy. Yes, your enemies, I think even Prabhakar has written that, your enemies will flee in seven ways. Yeah, who rise against you will be defeated and they will come out from one way and they will flee before you in seven ways. Okay, wonderful. So, you know, what this, what this, uh, and, and if you actually um, read the verses below, uh, and that's a huge list, okay um it, it it talks about the curses for disobedience that if you disobey the voice of the lord and do not follow his commandments what are the curses that come upon you and overtake you you know when you look you will begin to see how how unable we are to keep the law and that's that's exactly what you know we read in that verse where we said he became a curse for us the lord became a curse for us and so that we may have have that that blessing you know he redeemed us from the curse of the law so that we will become a blessing so you know take time to um uh, just read those you know the the rest of that that chapter to just help us understand how much um, from what God has done on the cross, He's kept us away from. You know, like like I was um, like I was uh, in a part of a Bible class, and this is something that really struck my attention. It it says, you know, um, we feel, especially when there are certain things like um, when when you feel you've been hurt by somebody, or um, you've been wrongly hurt you know and you may be in a place of uh just you can justify what they have done to you is absolutely wrong and uh, you go up to god and say lord it is my right this is my right to feel this way i have every right you know you hear this uh, often being said i have every right to feel the way that i'm feeling to feel angry to feel um uh, you know, frustrated or uh, sad, I feel, uh, um, you know, very many emotions. Uh, now, even as you may say that you have the right, when you look at what the way that Christ dealt with us, the only thing that we deserved, you know, when we say we, have a, we deserve to be loved or we deserved to, to have someone ask us for forgiveness, the only thing that we deserve in the dealings with God is death, right? Because everything that we, we are in such a sinful state that the only thing that we deserve is death. And everything that comes beyond that is purely God's grace. Everything, everything, every right or everything that we need or we want comes only as a result of God's grace. So, actually you know can you think about that you know do, do we realize that that actually i deserve death and when i'm looking at being justified by someone's hurt on me i'm saying how how could i not be justified how could i not have what i'm asking for it it's a good reminder for us to understand that the only thing that we deserve is death and everything that comes as a result after that is on the purely the grace of god and so that that really put things you know in 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 a in a huge perspective for me of how you know we we when we 
we demand something and say, this is what I should be getting, or the justice is what I should be having. I should have that sense of revenge, you know, or I, I blame this on somebody else. And that's my right to do that, to remember that I don't deserve anything. You know, because as sinful as I am, I don't deserve anything. And it is only God's grace that has given me all things. And he's abounded me with that grace. Okay, So take some time to look through that Deuteronomy 20 to see that entire list uh, to just help us see how gracious and awesome God is for us by just what he's done for us on the cross. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, by the work of the cross, we also see that the cross is a place where we see the defeat of Satan. Uh, we see that by what Jesus did on the cross, he triumphed, he disarmed, Colossians 2, 5, 15, that he disarmed every principality and power, and he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in victory. You know, so the Lord Jesus conquered and defeated Satan, his demons, all the powers of darkness, on the cross so that you and I could have a place of victory, so that you and I could walk in the triumph of the cross, which is victory, which spells victory. So Isaiah 53, 12 says, you know, he shall divide the spoil with the strong. What does that mean? That when Jesus won the victory, he he takes all that, all the spoil and he shares that victory with us so that you and I can walk in that in that victory it it says in uh, you know it it talks about how because of the victory he won he will give us all that he has won all that he has purchased like a king who goes into war you know and and loots an entire nation and brings the spoils back to share with his subjects you know that's that's exactly the picture that without you having to do anything he did the work he 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 defeated it he he did all of that on the cross so that you and i can just um uh, have that victory, that place of triumph, right? So uh, because he's disarmed that to understand that no, no work of the enemy, no oppression of the enemy has any power over us because he's the one who has destroyed every power of evil and power of death so that whatever we receive can be in, in a place of victory. Okay, so through the cross, now this is the basis. So, so this becomes a reminder for us every time we, we get into a place of um, uh, coming to a place of healing and deliverance is knowing that everything that we have today is because of the cross. And because of what Christ did on the cross for us, we, we have that wholeness. We have that shalom because he's born it for us. His punishment gave us that shalom. He has moved us from this kingdom of darkness into this kingdom of light. He has um, bought us from a place of curse where we should have have been subjects to curses. We have been got, we have been brought into those blessings of God, that inheritance of God, and to know that Satan and everything. Uh, the power of Satan and his his subjects are all defeated, and we have victory over over things that has bound us. So to just understand this part of what the cross has done for us, you know, reminding ourselves over and over that that this is the truth of where we get. This is becomes the basis of our of our healing and deliverance, okay? The second point that we will look in, into today is something again that we have uh, we have read over and over again of understanding that, um, you know, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 18. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone away, has passed away and all things, you notice that word, all things have become new and all things are of God. So when we are in Christ, we become a new creation. We Everything that was part of us is gone. All things become new. So we, when we become a new creation, we have a new identity. And we also have the power to walk in this newness of life. 
everything that is old is left behind and we have you know we walk free from anything that has kept us enslaved in our lives and this this is also in the realm of emotions that place of self pity that place of condemnation that place of weakness that place of darkness a place of oppression all of that we walk it's it's like you know you take off your robes and put on a new robe so everything that enslaves us in our life before we have come to christ before we have accepted him are all moved away or before we make that renewal with him again so things of the past have no more a part of your life it is something that you disconnect and you break and that becomes you know like a very conscious understanding and a, and a mindset and an attitude where you say this is all part of who i was but when he made me new he made me victorious he made me he blessed me he called me loved he called me accepted he bought joy he bought peace he bought wholeness he bought uh, you know a smile all of all of things that were that wasn't a part uh, that's been a part of you before has been moved away now what you when you say new creation it's something that is fresh that is new that's something that didn't exist before so you know uh, you really ho- take a hold of this in in you know even as we we're talking about this in your spirit that everything has changed your identity your soul your life your very nature your standing before god the position that you have all of this has changed and this understanding is something that needs to come uh, in alignment with with this truth when you are seeking your um when you're having when you're being healed and when you're being delivered so when you walk in this new creation what happens you become transformed you become more like christ so everything that is not of him is taken out and you become like christ because in christ we have been bought we have been it says the word that says is purchased we have been bought by the blood of the lamb the precious costly blood blood of the lamb and we have been redeemed we have been um you know we have you have been set free and that's where we know that, that there is no power no more right that the enemy has over us so what we can do in this understanding is where we stand resist the evil one and ensure that every part of the uh, area of our lives that has been subject we stand in confidence that we are a new creation no more can he affect you with the lies and deception so whenever he comes back and says hey but you're still the same way you still feel a lot of self pity you're still you know you're still um, you know you're still good for nothing now these are lies and deceptions that the enemy brings we we saw that the last um, in the last two classes of how these wrong thoughts are also bought in by the voice of the enemy because he is a liar he is a deceiver he he's he's the accuser of each one of us so when we build on to the truth when we meditate that's the word yeah when we meditate on being new because of what because of of who, uh, of who purchased us when we understand that we become new we come to a place of con- resist the enemy and the evil one okay and as we we become his new creation we are also called the temple of god so when we are a new creation you know like um like sometimes i i i don't know if if you all have you know if like you're like me but then when when i get something new you know maybe it's uh, it's it's something like like maybe in the kitchen when i get something new maybe it's a vessel or something that is 
that I've really longed for, what you do is you ensure that after this, you know the use you will definitely ensure that it is wiped clean it's it's spotless it's you know all the all the soot is taken off and the oil is gone and if it needs that uh, you know that special treatment of uh, um of, of doing something to it to it like you know i have a cast iron that i that i really like and i take care of you know so then you, you're doing things in a way that you you keep it you set it apart for for use again, right? So similarly, when you're a new creation, you're consecrating every part of yourself. That would mean you set it apart so that it doesn't it doesn't become tainted again. And that's that you do with the power of the Holy Spirit, right? You consecrate your your thoughts, you're consecrating your emotions, you're consecrating what you desire, you consecrate your words, you consecrate your uh, affections, you you consecrate even even things that you you have a desire to have. So we bring ourselves to a complete setting apart to the Lord. And this becomes foundational to our belief and to, to understand that when we are a new creation, we are set apart for his use, which means every part of our areas, our souls, our spirits, our bodies, and, and in this place, our souls, what we are thinking, what we are feeling, how we are behaving is set apart for us. So this becomes extremely foundational for us to know what Jesus has done for us and what he has brought us to be into a new creation um, so that we can experience whatever he has for us. So these two things, I mean, and we will look at the other three the next, uh, next week as we go on, the other three being the authority to be in a place to cast out demons, the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the power of the word. So these the first two bases, what God has done for us on the cross and how he has brought us into a place of a new creation because of what he did. So this becomes our basis. This becomes like, like those foundational pillars for us, even as we receive our healing and deliverance. Okay. All right. I'd just like to open this out maybe for any thoughts, any questions, um, any observations, anything. We have around five minutes uh, before we close. Anybody has any questions? I think even as uh, you know, we we keep going forward in this lesson. Um, you know, we I'd really like to take some time. Uh, you know, after we've progressed through some of this, and especially how to receive our healing and deliverance, spend some time uh, specifically on on praying. Um, you know, for each other. Um, and, uh, and and I'm looking forward to that time where we can come to a place of just, uh, even as we're learning, to be able to pray and release this healing and deliverance as we do so. Yeah, uh, I don't think there's anyone who has any questions. Okay, if not, uh, may I request anybody to please close with a word of prayer? Someone who hasn't probably prayed before, it'll be nice to have one of you pray. Mm, I like, I don't like calling out names, but um, if no one's, so yeah, so some names maybe Pratik, uh, Subhajit. Abhinas, Abhishek, anybody would like to close with a word of prayer, please? Kishan, Yashi, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we bless you. We give you praise and glory 
Thank you for all we have learned, Lord, in this class. We thank you for our instructor. We thank you for how you have used her to impact upon us understanding, wisdom, and knowledge on the areas of restoration, healing, deliverance, on the areas of our wholeness, and all that you have also done for us to be set free and to have the blessings, Lord, that you paid for us. You paid on our behalf with your blood on the cross. We thank you, Lord, for all this that we have learned. We pray that our lives will be whole in you. And that whatever, Lord, issues, whatever things we need to heal from, we pray that we will be healed from such. And above all, or be used as agents, O oh Lord, of healing, of deliverance of wholeness, Lord, to others who are in one form of bondage or who have been hurt in one way or the other. Uh, Lord, you will use us, Lord, to set them free. You will use us to bring your blessings upon their lives. We pray, Lord, for our structure. We pray that you would use her greatly and increase her on all sides. And your wisdom upon her life, Lord, will continually increase. I pray, Lord, that as we all go, Lord, every, anywhere we are in any part of the world, Lord, be with us, Lord. Um, be with us as we sleep for those of us at night, for those of us during the day. Commit everything that we're doing that, Lord, you will grant us success and keep us safe. Till we meet again in the next class, Lord, keep us, Lord. And let your word continue to grow more and more in our hearts. And, Lord, let us be vessels to be used, Lord, by you to bring you glory here on earth. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Thank, Thank you, Shay. Thank you, everybody. God bless, and we'll meet you next week. You. Have a blessed week ahead. Bye-bye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.